Okay, so the supplies I'm using today is the Smooth Newsprint, uh, 18 by 24. Uh, this one is made by Pro Art, which is pretty good. I uh, really like the paper. It's really good for um, practice. And the pencil I'm using is Conte El Paris, the 1710B. Comes in a pack of 12 like so. And yeah, 1710B, Conte El Paris. And then of course the kneaded eraser. And the, usually I use this at the end of a drawing, picking out little uh, areas. Uh, this is the Tombow Mono uh, Zero Eraser uh, eraser pen. It's really, really fine. I really like this eraser. So that's it. Let's get to the drawing. All right. So I'm going to start out just by doing the Riley method and uh, get like a basic structure going on this. Jordan Peterson portrait. So let's start out with the basic circle. And he's in a three quarter pose. I'm gonna go ahead and actually make this more of an oval than a perfect circle, giving some uh, volume to the, the back of the head as well. As somebody, I forgot who it was on uh, the last video, gave me some insight into why um, my uh, Riley head wasn't working out a little bit. Well, not that it wasn't working out, but like the um, the circle here for the side of the head was too far in, and I had to adjust it in the video. And somebody suggested that it's because I didn't do an oval versus a circle like that initially. So I didn't, so basically it forced this, this uh, side oval into the head, face too much. So that was a really good critique and I really appreciate it. it helped a lot actually. So, so let's go back here. So just checking the angle of his brow line it's about like that. It's probably a little bit lower. Let's check that angle again. Okay. to the thirds of the face, so the hairline, bottom of the nose, excuse me, the hairline, the brow, bottom of the nose, and bottom of the chin. And it's roughly three equal parts, but I'm going to double check because it looks like his bottom, bottom third is a lot longer because he is talking and his mouth is open slightly. So the bottom third would be a little bit uh, longer. So let me just check those. I'm checking the, the bottom of the nose to the brow. And I'm going to compare that to the, the forehead. And it looks like I just need to move the nose up a bit. Making the bottom third a lot longer. And let me compare the bottom third to the forehead. I think the hairline should be a little bit taller. Let's see. So I want to get it just right. Let's move the brow line down slightly making the nose shorter. Let's 
Let's move it back. So it's not exactly three equal parts because he is not a generic head. He is Jordan Peterson. So got to make it look like him. So I think that's in the ballpark enough to get on with this uh, initial lay-in. And the center line will be somewhere right here. I'm going to try to keep it light and not draw hard lines just yet. Uh, let's go ahead and put in where the ear would start in this quadrant here. And I'm going to go ahead and measure from this line to, let's say, that far side cheek where it meets the nose, the bridge of the nose, there to there, and compare that to the bottom of the chin and see where it falls. So it comes to the brow. So this distance from bottom of the chin to the brow line. Yeah, that's what I thought. I was too far out. So we got to bring this guy all the way over. So I lose my cool looking structure. That is okay. It's not perfect on everybody and every situation. brow, <clears throat> excuse me, and let's go ahead and do the rhythm for the, the brow ridge. And then the circle on the forehead, which is pretty prominent, not so, maybe not so much as a circle, but he does definitely has a plain change on the forehead that you can see in this photo really well. We got the light coming down. It's really strong single light source, which makes it makes really cool shadow shapes. Let's go ahead and put in the nose. That angle. Let's check that angle. Make sure we got it right. Pretty close. And the triangle on the tip of his nose. Let's make that a little bit wider. So I'm going to try to be more patient on this drawing and take my time with the measurements before I go into tone and shadow and then and shading and all that. Let's see. Okay. So the far side, let's get the under the nose here. And the far side lip comes down right there. 
can't see much in the eye over here. A lot of it's going to be lost in the shadow. Which will be kind of cool. Because I'll probably, when I shade, I'll bring all this shade, all this shadow in. And it'll fill in into that far side eye. It's going to be a lot of fun. I just got to stay patient and wait. So where should we go from here? Let's see. Neck. The shadow under the neck probably be about right here. You really can't see what's going on in the background because it's going to be lost. Something like this. All right, let's go back into the that brow shape. Oh yeah, let's go ahead and put the muzzle line. That'll help me place some some of the features better. This far side muzzle line comes out to about right here. Flattens out here, comes up. And it wraps around that bony structure of the nose. Okay. And let's place the lips here, keeping that angle that we have on the brow. I'm going to come down here and do the same angle for the lips. Actually, I'm going to use the cast shadow under the nose to kind of help gauge the distance. from the bottom of the nose to the lips. That makes, hopefully that works. Let's see. sliver, just a sliver of that far side top lip showing. And then lips come across. So make sure I get that angle right. So somewhere over here will be the node of the mouth. And again, his mouth is open and he's talking. So it changes some of that structure a little bit. And then we have that cast shadow from the upper lip falling down on the bottom lip. Something like that. And then the bottom lip is tucked under that sliver of the top lip. Let's check the angle of that bottom lip. I have it, yeah, I have it a little too steep. cast shadow under the bottom lip starts about 
right there. Comes up. And then kind of gets a little soft on that far side. And you see we got this rhythm right here. I'm trying to keep myself from shading. I just almost started to shade that area. No need. It's too premature. Let's go back to the chin. And where that cast shadow under the bottom lip starts, just slightly to the left of that is where the chin starts. And there's a sliver of light between the edge of the chin and that cast shadow. And then the bottom of the chin wraps around. And this rhythm of the outside of that muzzle line, you can see it matches up pretty well with his structure of his face and the, the core shadow on the chin. minutes in, not too bad. So this is throwing me off a little bit. It looks too, this distance right here looks too wide. Uh, the distance from the top of the lip to the nasal right here, the bottom of the nose, that looks pretty good. Uh, the bottom lip can be a little bit wider, so maybe I, if I just move that, sh that cast shadow a little bit, It'll look better, so, or more, more accurate to what I'm seeing. I feel like the bottom that needs to come in a little bit further. It's kind of like sitting slightly underneath the upper lip a little bit. Let's see, I'm stretching my back, it's so tight. Mm, just need to relax a little bit. Some looks like he's thinking really hard and he's scrunching up his brow a little bit, so there's some interesting folds in there. And his eyebrow kind okay, of be right there on the edge. Let's go ahead and use some of that. Well, actually, let's go to the ear. get the ear mapped in. So I'm taking a horizontal line from the bottom of the ear, holding it up to the image, and it crosses right about where the nose is. I'm using that to help me place that ear. And 
and much of the ear is lost in the shadow. Um, but what the what I can see of it comes to about right here on this horizontal line. So I think that's good. And let's look at the distance from the what do you call this the the orbital the end of that to the beginning of the hairline is about like so. And then his hair comes up, and then he's just got all kinds of curls, and not curls, like yeah, I guess so, waves and curls. Just map in some basic hair shape. Again, much of this is going to be lost in a shadow. Let's go back. Back over here. Looking at this angle, I think I think I flattened it out. Yeah, it's a little flat. That's okay. I'll just stick to the, uh, the structure of the Riley. So let's look at this rhythm right here. This comes down, wraps around on that muzzle line, comes up and over the ear. That'll help us place that cheekbone. There's a coarse shadow that runs along that area. crease that comes up underneath that shadow. I don't want to get in the shading just yet, but I just want to put that mark in. So when the time comes, it'll be in the right spot when I'm doing the shading. And I don't like it because I think it's too far over. So I was looking at the distance from where that crease was to the corner of the mouth. And it might be that I don't have the node of the mouth far enough out. So I think it could be a little bit further. Out than what I had. Okay, so let's continue. Yeah, that feels better. Using, <laughs> using that mole as a landmark actually kind of helps. So the crease comes up. And then up here, we have a plain change, bony structure of the zygomatic arch. Let me redo that shape a little bit. Yeah, something like that. So I'm looking at the distance of the chin here, and I think it's too, too long. It's not bad, but I think I can make it a little bit better. And that 
course shadow over here. I forgot what that that mark is, that crease right here that you see often. I forgot the name of it. it. Has a name. It's funny because I just looked at it earlier today. I saw it on a diagram somebody had online. Let's see. So we have that, and then let's look at. I don't know if we need to put that in because you see, if you look right into the right at the this area, you can see the light spot where the plane change from the cheek, right? So if you take this rhythm from the nose of the mouth up to the ear, you can see like this is really dark, and then it catches a little bit of light like right around here in the drawing, or uh, <laughs> in the uh, photograph. But when I squint down, this area disappears. So I think I'll just ignore it for now. And then once I put in all the tone, I'll pick it out. So let's go ahead and take a break. It's already 26 on the clock, and I'll be right back. Okay, so I'm back. I just had some coffee. And so right off, I see the upper lip needs to be changed a little bit. I have it too curvy. It's probably because I've been drawing a lot of pretty, pretty girls with the curvy lips or something. But it needs to be flattened out a little bit. So let's go ahead and do that. Yeah, it looks much better. I think also over here, uh, the far side of the upper lip, you can see just the tad of that cheek, and then a little bit of a curve. So I just want to exaggerate it ever so slightly. Put a little bit more of a cast shadow out here. Yeah, that looks better. The bridge of the nose, the bone structure right there. And let's see. My creaky chair popping. Let's probably get a new chair. I like this one though. I got it at a like a second hand store. It's one of those wooden chairs. I forgot what they're called. Kind of you see like on a somebody's porch out in the woods, or not woods, like on a farm or something. But uh, it's really comfortable, but it makes a lot of noise. Um, okay. Concentrate, bro. Jeez. ADD kicking. I'm gonna work on this corner of the mouth. I guess what I'm pretty much about to do is a lot of shadow mapping. I started a little bit over here and on the chin. Uh, before I do that, let me just kind of like look at everything and measure. 
make sure um, things are placed right. So I'm going to measure from this earlobe to the to the nasal. So I'm going to do I'm going to hold my pencil up to the image in a second. But I'm going to take this measurement and then compare it to the bottom of the chin and see where it falls in this area. So holding my hand up to the image, getting that distance using my thumb and the tip of the pencil. And now I'm measuring it to, comparing it to the bottom of the chin. It looks like it falls to about right there. So hopefully that is good. So about right there. And yes, okay. Well, uh, actually, am I off? I am off. I'm off by like a quarter of an inch. So that means I get to move the ear, which is really easy since I haven't done much to it. I'm about to sneeze, I'm fighting a sneeze. Let's see. There we go. It's funny, originally I had the ear all the way out here, and now it's all the way inside. That's why comparative, comparative measurement is so important. So let's do another one. Let's do... Hmm. What would be... Oh yeah, I always forget. I forgot to do the, uh, the line that goes from, let's say, the outside of the nostril to the inside or the right in the middle of the lips there's a line right there whoa i don't think that's right maybe it is so i'm going to do that angle with my pencil holding it up to the image and see what i got here i'm not very steady i'm like fighting it okay yeah that's about where it's at hmm. i thought it was going to be back here so that's good news so this angle right here is what i was looking for what else can i look what else can i look at and measure before i move on Does this look okay? Hmm. Let's do the thirds again. Just for fun. Huh. It's off. I gotta change it. Oh my god. Okay, that looks good. And now let's do the top, the bottom to the top. Bottom third. And compare that to the top. Okay, good. Mm -hmm. I'm just gonna Cash out, I was going to make that line a little bit more crisp and darker. Okay, I'm about to sneeze or cough. I'm not sure which. I'm back. Hopefully I, I remembered to edit that out because I was really loud. Uh, let's see. So let's go back to the drawing. I can't see much of anything in that eye socket. So I might just have to leave that. All blank, not blank, but just one, one tone. Gosh, I wish I can see inside of that. If it was like, if he would, if it was a live model, I can actually look inside a shadow, and my eyes would adjust, and I can see it. 
but because it's a photo, it's it's not gonna work out that way. Hmm. I might have to put it into a Lightroom, uh, lighten it up, and see if I could uh, see some structure inside. But for right now, I'm just gonna continue. Or I can just make it up. Whoops, I don't want that one. I want that angle. Ah, that's about right. And his collar is in shadow about right there. And comes down. I'm trying to see where the back of the neck is, but I, th I think it might be over here somewhere. And then his coat comes down, maybe like that. tie something like that and this is all in shadow Just kind of trying to map in the basic shapes of the ear. Granted, most of it's in shadow as well. shapes.
back of the head, of course, will be mostly lost. Let's go back over here and do some more shadow mapping. I'm going to do a measurement from this earlobe to the corner of the eye right here. And compare that to here. just a little bit, just a touch. Normally, I probably wouldn't, but why not? It's better. All right, 17 minutes in. I gotta remember to edit out that cough. And let's try to clean up the face a little bit. Actually, let me. Probably going to tone when I come back from this next break. It looks like his hair comes down here. I got the loudest neighbors. Oh 
was dropping shit on the floor upstairs. Sounds like they have a pool table. And they're just dropping the billiard balls on the floor <laughs> throughout the day. Makes me want to go up there just to see what, what they're doing. Let's see. They're actually not that bad. It's just it's kind of funny. It just makes me curious. And he's got some curls. I don't know how much I should invest into this area. Looks like he's working up a mental sweat on one of his on his uh, discussions. He came to San Diego once, and I was actually thinking about going. And it didn't work out. I would have had to take off um, a day off from work to go see him, but I wish I did. Because now, you know, with the COVID and everything, and that would have been cool to see him. Because I don't know if he's going to come back after all that shit he went through as well. But that would have been cool to have seen him on stage. So when I come back and work more on the shadow shapes and probably some of the half tones and trying to think about connecting uh, shadow shapes to other shadow shapes with half tone and just kind of make everything uniform. And I'll be right back. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, let's see. All right. So what I did was I went. So here's the picture. Well, it's on my phone here, but I also have it on the TV in front of me, like I normally do. But I put it through like a filter, and really ex put it on a high exposure, and I can see into the eye shadow a little bit more. So I'm gonna utilize that a little bit, just to give a little bit more. It's not going to be a lot of more detail, but just just a hint of an eye better than just like like a big pool of tone without any form to it. So so that'll be cool. Uh, let me put that away. And I'm still I'm being, I'm being very patient on this one, which I'm really happy about. Uh, I think we're about 45 minutes in, and I still haven't gone into. Uh, putting tone, like a lot of tone anyway. So that's pretty cool. Usually I get really impatient by this point and uh, start going crazy with tone and then seeing mistakes that I have to change and it takes a lot more time. So I'm looking at the lips and I still don't like that upper lip. And I think what's happening is I had it straight before I had it curved up, but it's actually I'm just looking at it right now, it's got a slight curve down to it. So, very, very subtle, but I still want to try to get that in the right way. And, oh yeah, the other thing I saw was... A little bit of a structure of the lip, and that tone comes in and it wraps around. It's 
kind of nitpicky. I don't know how much this is going to translate later into the final final drawing, but I'll just go ahead and put that in. And I'm moving the shadow over to Gosh darn it, I feel like a sneeze coming on again. Gosh, earlier I coughed actually, huh? Let's not think about what that could be, huh? I don't even want to say it. I'm so tired of hearing about it, I don't even want to say the words. Uh, let's see, let's go back here. I got all distracted now. All right, let's get back on track. I'm gonna bring these uh, shadows back up a little bit. Put a little bit of an angle. Instead of like a curve, I'm going to put a little bit of a, uh, what do you call it, like a, a flat, just choppy, on the, like a choppy line, instead of like purely curve. Um, I don't like where that ends up right here. It kind of comes up over here. Not going to see much of it. That line, it's going to be in the shadow. Oh, that's right. I wanted to move this up, I think. Do I or don't I? Let me check. I'm going to measure to this point and this point here on the collar and grab that distance, that length, compare it to the bottom of the chin. Yeah, that's good. fix this angle. I'll leave this a little bit wider than I see it. That'll be fine. Now my nose is running. <laughs> Let's see if I can hold on for a little bit until break. I don't think I can. I'll just let it run down my face. I don't care. You guys can't see it. Let's see. All right, what else do I need to work on before I go into tone? Hmm. I'm spending a lot of time trying to get everything in line. So hopefully that pays off. I'm just going to work on some of this half tone. The 
Let's go ahead and connect those shapes. I'm connecting these two shapes together. Um, a lot of times, if there's too many uh, half tones or shadow shapes that are independent of each other, it seems to make the drawing look kind of dirty and smudgy. that chin. I don't like it. Oh, I see. Why didn't I see that before? There's like, I forget the name of that uh, skin fold that hangs off the neck a little bit. I didn't even see that earlier. I was looking at this other shape up above it. There we go. Again, this is all gonna be lost in the shadow. So now I'm thinking, I need to start thinking about how I want to design the shadow, because he's got a black jacket. So that's definitely gonna be dark. And I don't know if maybe I'm gonna come in and make that kind of rough. Uh, this has gotta be in shadow. So all this is gonna blend in together. So all the, this dark and this dark here, and the shadow on the jacket and the jacket itself. And then also in the background, maybe somewhere around here. So let me look at that eye. I'm going to change the image to that blown out um, image I had. I should have set up the other camera so you can see the TV that I'm looking at, but that's okay. Let me get it. There we go. Okay, so, oh yeah, that's way better. I can totally see what's going on. I can't really see the, the eye itself, but I can see the shape of the brow a lot more. So it comes like this. So one of the advantages of drawing from life is that you get to see inside of the shadows a lot easier. Um, it's amazing how the eye does that. Whereas in a picture, if it's you know dark in the shadows, it's really difficult. You're almost stuck with what you have. Um, I'm going to bring this, pretend like I can see the eye and I know where it's at. Um, so you follow the angle of the bridge, you come over here to the nostril, and you follow that parallel line. And with that you can find the corner of the eye. So, making a lot of this up. So hopefully it works. And let's see. I'm gonna go ahead and start mapping in the shadows. Not mapping, but filling in the shadows. back to the original. I'm 
looking for the edges. Some are really crisp. And some are soft. crazy about it. But I'll come back to it. Let me start putting in the tone under the nose. I'm going to try to think about a single tonal mass, meaning like all the shadows, all the darks are going to be roughly the same tone. And then later I can come in and adjust them. Because I started to try to, right off the bat, I was like make, making uh, different variations. And it, it starts to look weird and getting, um, it's just too soon for that. So I'm going to go back to single tonal mass. I'm trying to get it all set up and working together and then I'll come in and play with the, uh, the variations in tone and values. But for right now, let's try to keep it simple for my own sake. So let's go here. I'm just going to pull this pencil down. And as I'm pulling it, I'm rotating the pencil very slightly between my fingers. And hopefully that'll sharpen it up as I'm putting the tone in. So I don't have to use a razor blade to get my pencil sharp again. And also so I don't have like one seriously flat spot on my pencil. <laughs> so rotating it sharpens it really well. And you can think about the egg effect too. Um, as the light is coming from the top, this area is going to be much lighter than down here. So I can rub this tone into the bottom third of the face to create that illusion of the light being strongest at the top and getting weaker as it goes down the face into the bottom third of the face. Let's go into the hair. Much of the lines that I put in will be lost at this point. That's okay. to the far side. Now it's important not to freak out 
talking to myself because at this point we're entering what's called the awkward teenage years. <laughs> it's where the, uh, I start putting in tone, uh, start to lose lines, edges start to get all weird looking, values are off, and it just starts to fall apart. So the important thing, at least for me, is uh, to not worry about it and know that once I get the tone in, then I can come back and reaffirm, reestablish the edges and the lines that I need. Put some toner in the nose so I can pull out some highlights. And I do feel the oh so common feeling of panic as I'm putting in the tone. It starts off as excitement and then once I get a good amount of tone in, it turns into like a panic, <laughs> like a panic feeling, like, ah, oh, shit, what did I do, oh my god, my drawing, what did I do, I ruined it, that kind of thing, so we are going to ignore it, and just keep moving. So let me stop for a second and take a breath and just look at what I'm doing. So the bridge of the nose, I'm just going to reestablish that. That would make me feel better. Make me feel like I have some control. And I want to put highlights on that nose, but I'm going to resist it for right now because I'm still working on that single tonal mass. And I'm already like ignoring my own advice. So let's try to go back. <laughs> it's so hard. All right, let's go back. Single tonal mass. So looking for spots that kind of missed a little bit. Maybe they're a little too light. Maybe some areas are a little too dark, and I'm just trying to I squint down so I can see it a little bit better. Things blend in, and it's easier to see what needs to be corrected. I'm just going to fix that shape. I'm going to exaggerate a little bit. There we go. So much fun blasting in tone. Hopefully I don't forget that uh, beauty mark that he's got. I 
over exaggerated that. So let's push that down. Push that down. To the hair. Okay, so we're back. And I had some technical difficulty at the previous shoot because I think the battery went out, so I don't know how much video got lost. We'll have to wait and see when I go into editing, but hopefully, not too much. And hopefully, I'll remember to check battery anyway so back to the drawing and let's see okay so like right now you can see uh, things that are like way too light like the ears are way too light the cheek is too light things like that but I'm not too concerned about it right now um, I'm gonna continue to build up the dark tone I think or at least uh, try to get it a little bit more even throughout the drawing. And then I'll go and put in the darker darks, work on the edges and the line. And it's pretty much just going to be a wild ride from there because I'll be working everywhere. Like I'll work on the eye, then I'll probably jump over to the ear and jump over to the hair and jump back and forth everywhere. Uh, since I think we got a pretty good layout that's going to support most of this tone pretty well. Um, I sure hope so. Let's see. So I'm going to connect these shapes right here. So really dark shadow from the eye socket and then connecting that through the cheek down into a shadow shape underneath the cheekbone. And down that cheek rhythm, a pretty sharp edge right under the, the shape of the mouth. And then this half tone connects to this cast shadow under the lip. using some kind of cross hatching maybe you might call it just for uh, some texture give it some life and pull out some tone on this far side of the lip actually let's wait let's wait we'll save we'll save the highlights for later Working on these edges. 
softening them where need be. I'm putting some more texture lines in the nose. I'm going to put more tone in the tip of the nose here to help support the highlight that's coming eventually. I used to hate that like in art school in class. <laughs> Not hate, but just I thought it was funny. And uh, I would save the highlight towards the end, which is what you're you know we're taught to do, right? So you can get all the values together. And a lot of times um, <laughs> a teacher would come over and, uh, you know, they work on your drawing and help you out. And But, man, sometimes they would uh, they would put that highlight in and it just took the cherry, you know. It just took my, took the, the best part of the drawing is putting that, that highlight in at the end. And I hated that when they would come in and do that for you. It's like, oh, man, I was saving that for the end. That was my dessert. Let's see. Let's come all the way down. I think I'll just leave this kind of rough. Let's put some tone into that white of the collar. Kind of knock it down. This is going to compete with the face too much. I'm not too worried about the pattern that he has in the tie. Put some strong angles. back let's check things out here I'm going to turn this head a little bit that I'm going to push that down try to make it look like it's wrapping around might have been too dark let's go ahead and tap some of that tone out smooth it out a little bit. So I'm going to go a little bit darker, just building up that tone.
How much paper do I have on this thing? I feel like I need more paper. It's pretty thin. Yeah, let me pull out. I have a like an old uh, paper pad cover that's in there. I'm gonna take that out. I think it's messing with my pencil. There we go. So I want it, I want it to be uh, I want the pad of the paper to be a little bit softer. Okay. Yeah, that's better. I'm gonna switch pencils. I think that one is a little rough. Okay, this is better. Sometimes that happens. One pencil is a little harder than it probably should be. following the, sh the hair pattern right here as I drop in all this tone. And it's going to look really funny right now. And I'm going to have to just stick it out, you know? Just just make it through the awkward stage. Looking at the time. Actually, you know what? I'm just going ahead and put a tone in on this cheekbone because it is driving me crazy. It's so light. I just want to knock it down and get some control. And I'll come back, of course, and work on it some more. Okay, now I can, <laughs> now I can go on. That was just driving me bonkers. It's not like it's not like I was gonna leave it, but my eye kept looking at it while I was trying to look at something else. I'll probably I'll probably come in uh, later with the eraser, maybe the Tombow. The, the pen eraser and kind of put little pieces of stray hair and stuff like that. So I'm trying to think about the kind of like almost like the cast shadow from the the hair and using the side of my pencil to get like a sharper edge and dragging it and creating that hair texture. Again, I'm knocking that down because it's driving me crazy. And 
there's a well, it's not really that hard of an edge. I was thinking maybe the, like the hair would be really crisp right here, but it's actually not. Because he has some some gray hair in this area as well as the dark hair. So normally this would be really crisp from dark hair hitting the light skin and the lighting itself, but it's kind of softened by the gray hair. Let's see. So maybe looks like there's a piece of hair that kind of comes down. It's kind of fun. You can just design kind of freely how you want the hair. It doesn't have to be exact, of course. Gives you some play. Gives you some room to design. Establish some of those lines really simple because we're going to put tone in down there. And some of that's going to get lost. A lot of a lot of what I'm doing also right now is squinting. Uh, it's not so, I'm not squinting so I can see clearly. It's actually the opposite. It's so I can't see as well. What it does is it makes things blend in together a little bit. And also you can see areas that are too light or too dark. Squinting down allows you to see that, see that a lot better. And that really helps with the shading. That's See how those that previous pencil like really kind of scratched up the paper and had like really hard little stones inside the pencil and it it scraped the paper. Kind of a nuisance, but sometimes it's kind of cool. It like adds a lot of texture. You just have to be creative how you deal with it. Because once it's there, it's there. It's really hard to erase it. brain's not working. It's so hard to talk and do this at the same time. Let's see, let's go work on the shape a little bit in the head. This must be his thinking crease.
Just looking at the little halftone shapes on the temp temple area. You can use your finger to like pull out some of the tone too, especially if you have a clean finger. So like. Like right here, if I just see how much came out. Just one one clean finger, see what it did. So that's really helpful to know. And if you have a dirty finger, you can add actually add in some tone to a clean area. Let's go down here and kind of follow this really dark shadow shape. Let's try to make it subtle though. I don't want it too, too strong. And then it comes down, down his neck. squinting so hard now like I can barely see let's go back let's go back over here Take a break before the camera shuts off. Uh, be right back. Okay, actually, I didn't. I didn't take a break. I just came right back. I just turned the camera off and then let it do its thing for a second. And let's continue. Hopefully, the camera is doing good. So I was put, I put all this tone in here, and I started like going into the darker darks and then working my way to the left side of the paper. And again, I'm using the side of the pencil, and as I'm going down, I'm rotating it slightly. And then I'll, I'll like go down, rotating, pick up, go down, rotate, and that sharpens the pencil and helps get it uh, even more even tone. Let's really blend that in. Let's knock that down. That area is way too light. At least for now. Because I will come in and put highlights. So I need it to be somewhat dark to support those highlights. Let me reestablish this shape. Maybe 
give you a hint that it proceeds into the back a little bit here. Uh, I'm panicking again. Just gotta relax, just chill, just drawing. It's just YouTube, nobody's gonna judge you. Let's go back and start sharpening up some of those edges that I lost. Because that will make me feel better. I just started to do highlights again. Caught myself. Hmm. It's funny because my mind starts to go somewhere else and I start to kind of daydream a little bit. And then before I know it, I'm doing highlights. Not doing a highlight, but I'm just going to pull out some of this tone to play with the shape a little bit. There we go. So I'm pushing the tone back in and trying to capture that form. I think I have this one too dark. I should probably just connect them. Yeah, there you go. So this core shadow is thicker right here and as it goes across the bony chin structure it get, becomes thinner. work on the shape of this cheekbone. It's a little too, the edge is a little too sharp. And when I squint down and look at the image, this edge right here is really soft.
I'm paranoid that the camera's going to cut off. I think the memory might be getting full. Just have to, on my next break, I'm going to have to take the camera off and download some of the, the files onto the computer. Let's lose this background more. Even though this is a white white shirt he has on, I'm putting um, a lot of tone into it to knock it down. Because I want the face to really capture the highlights. I don't want it to uh, I don't want the shirt to compete. Couldn't help myself, I had to put some highlights in. So, this line right here I think is too dark. I'm just gonna knock it down a little bit. I'm gonna come on the, um, come over to, um, oh, maybe. Yeah, let's go ahead and make this line darker. Take a deep breath and let's assess. Actually, you know what? Sometimes <laughs> it sounds strange, but looking at it upside down helps me see the tones in relationship to each other. So let's just knock that down a little bit. This cheekbone is still pretty bright. That chin can use some more. Because remember that egg, the egg effect of the light. The light is strongest on top and it gets weaker as it goes down the face. Still trying to avoid doing highlights on the nose and such. It's really hard. Let's put some cross hatching in here. Give it some life.
like that line. This right here is too too dark, too crisp. I'm gonna soften it. I want some lines to disappear that creates atmosphere, allows the allows the figure, or in this case the portrait, to blend blend in, or how do you say it? Maybe it's connected to the surrounding. I don't know if that makes any sense. Let's just say it looks cooler than having every every single edge crystal clear and crisp. I much prefer it like lost lines and blown out areas like over here, like uh, you can't even see the neck shape. It just gets lost in the background, which I think adds like a three dimensional feel to it. That you would probably not get so much if you had every line uh, crisp. Well, maybe that's not true because then you can use techniques of line overlapping each other to create three-dimensional feel so I take that back <laughs> let's see I'm gonna work on this right here And I think this whole area on the temple can use more tone. Doing a little bit of cross hatching. And whatever I don't like from that, I can blend out my finger. Getting there. It's got all this curly hair up at the top.
Let's turn it upside down again. We're at 17 minutes. Just probably still got a couple more minutes to play with it. Before the break. See this line right here is really dark. I don't like that. So I think I want to blend that in to the surrounding area a little bit better. I wasn't really paying attention to too much of what I was doing on the hair over here. I'm not sure. I think I'll just do what I want instead of try to get exactly what I see. Pick a couple of areas and try to make it look like there's a cast shadow under the hair. Almost like it's sitting right, you know, right on top of the head. I think that might work. It's very subtle. I feel like this is too dark. Okay, now I feel like it's too light. Forget that. Not that it's the most important thing, but let's see. I got a scrape right here I don't like. So I'm trying to use my eraser as best I can just to pick it out. And now I gotta put tone in delicately around it. Okay, we're at 21, better take a break. And then I gotta download all that video before I come back. All right. Okay, I'm back. And I can see something, two things already I can change, I need to change. Uh, the chin I made too small, which is funny because it, I thought it was too big before. Uh, so I gotta change that. And the shape of his forehead I gotta change. So I'm using the Tombow just so I can get that dark line out really good, really quickly. So I just wanna. Fix that shape. Actually, I think
Maybe I'll just leave that kind of lost right there. Instead of having a really dark line. I'll kind of build up the tone to the edge. something like yeah okay and let's leave that for now let's go back to that chin ah <sighs> all right the chin so let's take some of this out I'm using the Tombow eraser to pretty much draw there's so much tone in this area I, I can just draw with it It's funny though that I was. I kept shrinking the, the chin. And then it turns out I make it too small. Yeah. Pretty funny. All right. He's got a pretty strong jaw, actually, huh? For an intellectual, huh? shadow further down hopefully there's not something else really off that I can't see right now a lot of times drawing um, for like a few hours, the eyes get really, really tired. Or maybe it's the brain or a combination of the two and it becomes much more difficult to see values, to see <laughs> proportions and shapes. So just like anything else, there is a point at which you need to take a break. Or in my case, I think it's just... Uh, just need to do more... more time on the paper. More... more practice. I've been doing a daily warm-ups with the Riley Method, which has really been helping. And uh, I did a video uh, before this one where I just kind of go over that uh, little exercise. And I find it so, so helpful. Okay. Yeah, he looks much more like Jordan Peterson now. That's hilarious. I was like, surely his, his chin can't be that big. I was like, kept, kept making it smaller and smaller and smaller. I like how the forehead is getting lost, lost the edge right there. I really, really like that. I'm going to try to push it a little bit more. Into a lost edge. I 
and see that this battery is now about to well not go out right away but it looks like it's getting low and because I'm paranoid because the last time it did go out I have to keep my eye on it let's see hmm maybe I don't like that maybe if I just pick that up and then do like something like that Hmm, I'm 50-50. Good enough for right now. I need to start thinking about how dark, the darkest dark, is going to be. Those are really too uh, too crisp of line. I need to soften that up. Let's look at it upside down. Check the values. So I'm squinting down and it's upside down. So it should help. Also another thing you can do, and I used to do a lot of when I was a little kid because my mom told me how to do it, is to hold the hold your drawing up in front of a mirror and look at it. And oftentimes you can see all kinds of things that are wrong with it just from seeing uh, the drawing flipped, you know. Or you can just take it with your phone, I suppose, depending on if you're like in class or something, you don't have a mirror. So I still haven't done the main, well, I guess that is the main highlight there, but I haven't done highlights in the nose or anywhere else really yet. So that's, that's really impressive for me. I'm quite pleased with myself for not jumping ahead. I'm just going to go in here and just squint down and look for hot spots to to clean up and then I think probably t after the break then I'll hit the highlights and maybe finish it that might be the well I don't know I say that every time I think it winds up being like another two hours <laughs> let's see I 
wonder if I should go darker. I'm kind of scared of the, I'm scared of the dark. Let's go for it. So I'm gonna go really dark, starting off in this cast shadow under the nose. And then from there, I'm gonna have to catch everything else up to it. So there's my darkest dark so far, right in that nose. And of course it's catching all the intention now. So that means I have to come up here Make this darker, everything, everything darker. Is that already committed to that value? Time. All right, coming up on 15. It went really dark. I like this spot of highlight, or not highlight, but um, lighter tone in the shadow. And I want it to disappear when I squint down, because I don't want it too bright. Let's see. Let's put some more tone on the nose to support the highlight that's coming.
comes the crisp shadow. There we go. Yeah, that's the money right there. Okay, let's take a break and we'll continue after. Okay, back. I am back and I'm back. And I think I need to knock this area down a little bit. Because it's taken away from the eyes. It's too, uh, a little too dark. Okay, let's, oops, so let's just look at it here, and, is that your too, too light? It's hard to tell. Hmm. Overall, I like where we're going. Nah, I'm just looking at the nose now. I feel like it's not long enough. Let's get out my Tombow again. I feel like I should put a highlight in so I can kind of gauge things a little bit better. Hmm. Let's try on the chin. over here pull so basically I'm doing like a it's kind of similar to doing a burnt umber pick out it's really fun let's see I, don't know, I was about to make that really crisp but I'm going to leave it funny because you look at one spot and you try to make it like you see it but 
uh, take into consideration of the drawing as a whole. Let's put a little highlight right here. I'm going to run one down the bridge of the nose too. Then up right in this spot. some out, take some out right there. I love this highlight up here. You can also uh, flatten the eraser to like this shape. And almost use it as a brush. Pull some tone out. Let's turn it upside down and see how the highlights are playing. Looks pretty good. Hmm. I really like that shape on that far side cheek underneath the eye. Right here. It's so it's such a tiny little shape. Unassuming, just sitting over there, but it kind of anchors everything on that far side of the eye. It's nice. I'm just gonna subdue some of that tone in the eye socket. Soften this edge a little bit more than I see. It's a little bit more crisp in the in the photograph, but I'm gonna soften it more, exaggerate the edge. I'm gonna connect it also down at the base to the cheek. I'm going to soften the lips, the upper lip, the edge of the upper lip. Try to make that a little bit more soft.
Is this cheek still too sticking out too much? I feel like it is. Hmm. take some of that dark core shadow down a notch. Hmm. Maybe I can take some attention away from it by using the ear. and into the, across the collar and into the, the tie. It's pretty dirty. Let me clean it up here. Okay. All right. I think I'm going to take another break. Let the camera. I need to uh, get another battery in the camera. Um, I feel like I'm blind right now. I can't see very much. I feel like, I think I'm fatigued. So I think I, if I eat dinner and come back, Actually, lunch. Something. Maybe an apple. <laughs> Whew. This is a hard one. Let's see. Let me turn it upside down. Feels, feels okay. Feels good. I don't trust my eyes. So let's take a break and then I'll come back and I think I'll finish it. Yeah, I think it'll be, I think I'll be able to finish it on the last, on our last little section. All right. Okay, back. And there's a few things I wanna work on. Um, little things actually that rhythm line in the forehead needs to come up it needs to shift over a little bit uh, so let's just take out some of that tone it's a little too low now that I'm looking at it with fresh eyes after a little break. Let's see. I don't want to make it a straight line. It looks kind of straight in the image, but I'm gonna I like the look that I had before where it's it's curved. And 
I I think I won't even make it as pronounced as I see it. Let's keep it um, a little bit uh, less noticeable. Really, I just I'm trying to think of the drawing as a whole and not not get too caught up in looking at each individual area by itself. I'm thinking a lot about like where I want the, the viewer to look. Um, most times when it's a portrait, it's pretty easy just because we go right to the eyes. Let's go to the nose, it's a little too dark. The lines are a little too dark. And this eye here, actually, uh, on break, my girlfriend was like, she didn't like this part. She felt like it was, she didn't know what was going on. Um, I guess with it, she said it kind of felt like it was uh, out of place. And so I think that's because it's too disconnected from everything. And it's always good to have people who are willing to uh, not only praise, but like critique your stuff. And I think I'm just going to... Bring that in, or great, like a little bit of, I don't know how to say it, like trying to just connect that piece or push it down a little bit. It might have been that it's too light. And I might just let it go completely. Because I don't want it to distract, that's for sure. Maybe that's maybe that's a little bit better. Oh yeah, and the the highlight I put on the the lips I didn't like that. I felt like it's too strong. Take out some, some of that hard edge on the lip. So I'm thinking about edges and which ones I want to be uh, soft and which ones to be crisp and, and straight or curved.
Let's pull out some of the tone in the cheekbone. And try to match it up to the muzzle area, that muzzle line. So was, oh, the hair, yeah, that's right. I was gonna do some, some work in the hair. Is it, his hair is catching some, some of that light. So I'm using my Tombow eraser, which is really fun to use because it's like, it's like drawing, but with an eraser. I'm just pulling tone out and also I'm putting some back in. I'm trying to catch that balance, you know? Of course I got tone all over my my hand here and I'm smearing it everywhere, making a mess. Wipe it on my shorts. <laughs> Try to be careful. I should probably use like a piece of paper to rest my hand on. Maybe at the break I'll get grab one. Let's see. So let's go back and take a deep breath. Just kind of look around, look for these half tones that are a little too dark. Kind of pushing down a little bit. Come down and work on the collar a little bit. Kind of reestablish some of these lines that got a little bit lost. See what it looks. I was thinking about maybe like pulling out some lines in the collar. Let's see how that looks. Yeah, I'm 
it's okay. Looking pretty good. I think I'm getting to the end of it. Let me just look at this thing upside down again. Checking the tones and the values. Hmm. Wish I had a piece of paper. Actually, Let me grab one of the... Eh, I don't want to do that. Or can I grab a piece of paper? I'll be right back. I'm going to grab a piece of paper. Nah. All right. Never mind. I'll just be careful. It's too far away. Let's see. some of it into the shadow a little bit more. Hmm, I think it's looking pretty good. Coming up on the end, I think. I'm gonna take one more break and I'll come back. But this might be it. 
usually I say like, oh, I'm done. And then I come back for like another hour. <laughs> so that might happen again. Because I think, I feel like if I keep going, I'm just going to um, make things worse. There's like a point of diminishing returns. I feel like I might be reaching that point. Yeah, I push, I push that far side um, cheek that came up under the eye. I push that little uh, pool of tone uh, pretty far down now. So it's less distracting. I think I'll do a little bit of that over here in this far side of the lip. I think this might be it. All right, guys, I think I am done. If I'm not, then I'll be back in a couple of seconds. <laughs> but otherwise, if it stays done, it's done. And thanks for watching. I really appreciate it. And see you next time.